okie dokie artichokey. So I have had this glassine on my desk for weeks. Uh, it said it had 27 of these number 540s. That was baloney. There's only this many in there. But uh, I tried to identify these and failed. I gave up. Uh, it was kind of late and was like, what the heck? When you get into these Washington varieties, there's a bunch of different types. There's a bunch of different variations. It can be a little bit tedious um, to determine well, you know, which one of these it is. The first step that I did, uh, that I decided was logical, I deduced, I need to determine if it's rotary press or not. Okay guys, so we got our Washington stamp here. We're gonna take the edge of our gauge. We're gonna slap down the corner edge onto the frame of the stamp and take a measurement of how tall the side of the stamp is. Now, a little tricky with the camera, of course, but I can tell you for sure it's definitely past 22 millimeters. As a matter of fact, it's past 22 and a half. It looks like it's just about 23 millimeters tall. So that is a dead giveaway for a rotary press. Now, just to be sure, because uh, just so you know, rotary press uh, should be um, uh, 22 and a half to 23 millimeters high. Right. So now let's check the width, which on the rotary press should be 19 and a half to 20 uh, millimeters. So let's see what this is like here. Let me get this centered for you. And we're going to do the same exact thing and slip it on the corner. Okay, this goes to 20. It goes all the way to 20. And we said what? Uh, it'd be 19 and a half to 20 millimeters wide to be rotary press. So, done deal. Alrighty, so here we are in the catalog. Now, um, what we have there is a bunch of A140 design stamps. It's because it has the numerical value next to the word sense instead of the written out wording, lettered uh, version. So this catalog always goes top to bottom in, in columns, okay? So at the bottom of the other one, we move to the top of this column now. It tells you the three cent that there's varieties and um, shows you the different denominations. Now, at the end of this first listing, these, you know, blocks of information. Now, these are critical. Okay. This is going to save you a whole bunch of time. So, for one thing, I already know, since somebody had said that they thought they were 540s, that it's probably a rotary press, and it's probably between these numbers. So, uh, all the rest of these, excluding the offset, should all be flat plate, right? That's why they list Rotary Press as its own variation. So, the first thing was to check if they're all rotary, and that would exclude the possibility of these stamps being any of these other numbers, which is awesome. Uh, so, that was clutch. It definitely saved me a bunch of time. I know for a fact it's between these numbers. Now, when we go in the catalog to the page, You've got numbers 538 through 546. Now, the rotary press, they have 11 by 10 perf. The 11 by 10 always goes, 11 is gonna be the horizontal and 10 will be the vertical. It also tells you the millimeter measurements. Now, <clears throat> I was thinking about now my little cheat sheet says that they can be 23 millimeters high, yet they're specifically stating here that these actually only go 22 and a quarter millimeters high. Interesting. Um, and then there are other variations here that go 22 and three quarter millimeter high, right? 22 and a half. Doesn't matter. 
the things that we're looking at, for one thing, it can't be this one because that's the one cent green and it can't be that because it's a three cent violet. <clears throat> so we know all these stamps are either 539, 540, because they're the two cent carmine rose. Can't be this, can't be this, can't be this, can't be this. Uh, so yeah, the only other possibility besides 539 and 540 is this 5. 46. Okay, that's also a two cent carmine rose. That one actually commands pretty high catalog value. And from there we go into flat plate. We know it's not flat plate. We check that. So now we've deduced. All we have to determine is, is it 539, 540, or 546? Now the difference is, let's start with 539, 540 are the types. Type 2 or type 3. 546 is also a type 3. So let's determine, is it type 2 or type 3? And that'll tell us, if it's type 2, we know it has to be 539, which is extremely valuable, but unlikely that we'll have that. But let's determine which type it is and go from there next. Okie dokie, so I was just browsing through the catalog, trying to familiarize myself with all the types. Uh, and you know what? I hate using this catalog to determine stamp types. It sucks. These descriptions just kind of suck. Um, I definitely struggle to comprehend what they're talking about sometimes. And they use words that I have to look up nonetheless. So there's a one shading line in the first curve of the ribbon above the left two. Whoopsie, excuse me. So let me show you the picture here. Now let me zoom in. So, using the catalog, what they're talking about is that. They're saying the first curve has one shading line. See that little smudge? That's what they're talking about. So, um, you know, okay. All right. Now, you move on. It talks about the button of the toga and all, whatever. So, I was like, okay, I got familiar with type 1. I'm like, okay, so here's type 2. Shading lines and ribbon as on type one. So, okay, so it's the same shading lines as type one. Anyway, I just get tired of going through this like this. So, what I just did was I just hopped on to Google. Okay, actually, let's go back. Ended up, uh, I said. Determining Washington two cent stamp types. And I ended up getting this first link, Stamp Smarter, which I already have a bookmark for. I use them. Uh, and so it tells you a bunch of different variations. How awesome is that? I don't know what the hell my camera's doing, sir. But um, <clears throat> now it tells you on the side. There are two lines right in that first curve, as, um, as uh, the Scott catalog said. Oh, 
um, rotary press printings, these double line on the outer curve of the ribbon. Five thirty nine, considering that that's type two. So I know that it's either five forty, all of them, or five forty six. So what's going to determine this for me next? Um, basically, the size. So nineteen and a half to twenty millimeters wide by twenty two tall, or nineteen and a half to twenty by 22 and a quarter so I need to go scrutinize very closely and measure the vertical millimeters on each of these stamps and see are they 22 exactly or more and as I already know I pretty much looked at all of them they almost all seem to be near 23 but let me double check so I was gonna edit all this through and I thought you know what let me show you guys real time the reality because all these stamps are imperfect and um, it isn't always such an easy thing, right? So we're looking for 22 millimeters uh, high. Okay, so let's take our gauge. By the way, this gauge has like a little, the line kind of comes off the edge of the, of, the, of the tip of the square. I use that little line when I want to just measure from the other side like that uh, of the stamp, otherwise I'll use it inside the square and do the bottom left corner, you know, so uh, just a tip. This, this stamp sucks, okay, because it's so far off center that the design is run into the perfs and it's kind of just not a perfect world. I'm trying to be certain that, um, that you all the way perfectly at the end, but let me just pretty much go at the bottom of the curve. And I know that was a little bit off, so okay. And it's pretty good to me. We are definitely above 22. It's very, very small. I'm gonna try and zoom in with my uh, editor here, but it's 22 and a half to me by eye. So that guy, unfortunately, is out. That's not a number 546. This must be a number 540, uh, which is still cool. It has, you know, $9.50 catalog value. Uh, so yeah, this one checks off, I'm convinced. Moving on to the next one, let's measure it out. I really, I can't stress this enough, guys. I, I freaking love this thing. This precision US multi gauge. Oh my god, this thing's awesome. I hated uh, using. Uh, I was using this guy. And it. I just found it super duper annoying. Um, what a pain in the butt. Okay. I digress. Let's like this on here. And see how tall this stamp is. 23. Oh, wait, hold on. Just a little bit. Well, I mean, yeah, 22 and a half. Uh, so that one's out. Uh, well, that one's at 540. Okay, so next one. I'm hoping they're 546. <laughs> Pretty good by eye. We are just about 23, so that's out. So, anyways, I'm not going to run through them all, but that's what's going on. Cool. So, uh, unfortunately, none of them were number 546. All of them were taller than 22 millimeters. But what I have here is a stack of 14 number 540 stamps. They're all used and uh, beautiful. $9.50 catalog value a piece. So that's killer. Now, 
I'm gonna scoot these aside. There's one oddball in the bunch. Okay, the interesting thing about this one. In the catalog they say, the part perforate varieties of numbers 538A and 540A were issued in sheets and may be had in blocks. Similar part perforate varieties for other numbers, uh, blah, blah, blah. Now, since all of those I know were 540s, they could be any of the 540 variations, right? They could have been part of a vertical pair that are imperforate horizontally, and um, they could have been a horizontal pair imperforate vertically. Those, of course, command higher catalog value. Now, uh, let's take a look at the stamp. So, quite obviously, it is imperforate on the top. Now, what I always question, or think to myself at least, is, well, did somebody snip the top of it off with a pair of scissors? Because the border, the frame of the stamp is cut. However, why in the world would they have? Uh, you know, because if it had perforations, they wouldn't have had to cut it. So, there's a pretty good chance in my mind that this has potential, this guy only, to be a 540A that is imperfect horizontally, which would mean that this would have been part of a pair or a block and had another stamp on top of it, probably a pair, right? Or I guess if it was in a sheet, sheets or blocks. Okay, so anyways, um, this just simply has potential to be a 540A. I guess ultimately, for that judgment call to be made, it would have to be expertized. I am not an actual expert, and I don't want to just, you know, blow smoke up someone's booty and tell them that this is the real article when I'm not 100% sure, unfortunately, but there's a very good chance. So, I figured I'd share. This has been fun. Uh, I will actually consider, I'm actually going to put that in the expertizing folder just for the fun of it. Now, 540A is only worth 140 bucks used, so it's not like it's going to make you uh, retire, but um, is it worth the money to send it out and get it expertized just for the fun of it? Plus, it does have a tear. I don't know. Ultimately, there's a part of me that wants to just simply slide this guy back into uh, my collection with all of the other Washingtons and just kind of let it be. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, I just keep this on my desk, this little cheat sheet here, because I struggle to remember the exact measurements. Excuse my sloppy handwriting, but yeah, I, it tells me, you know, how wide and tall each variation should be. And I just like to keep that handy. That way it's just right there in case I need it. So I decided to Put them all in the Mystic album, why not? I was actually gonna sell them, but if any of you guys happen to desire any of these specifically, just let me know. But um, nonetheless, uh, I decided to put them in here. Here they will stay. I thought to myself, what am I gonna do with them? And there we go. Woke up this morning fresh and I said, you know what? I looked at that thing on my desk and I was like, that's what I'm gonna take care of right now. I'm done with this thing on my desk, let's figure it out. So, if you were to be identifying all of the other potential varieties, like let's say they were flat plate, then I would have to be getting into all the different uh, types. It can take a long time, it's tedious. This is quite a painful thing to go through sometimes with these early American stamps. These types are pretty outrageous, but it's not undoable. If you have the right tools, you can do it. Uh, something my father taught me is that the greats don't know it all, they know where to find the answers. So, you know, uh, and also um, one thing that works for me is writing things down. You know, as I look through the catalog and I cognate and comprehend what I need to do as the first step, there's nothing wrong with writing that down on a sticky note. Number one, rotary press or flat plate. Next step, turn the type. Next step, I mean, Whatever you can do to figure these things out, do it. And uh, you gotta be logical. And 
use all of your resources that you can. Stamp Smart is great. The catalog is good. Even though I don't enjoy their descriptions uh, and they're pretty vague sometimes, uh, it's got its place. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope you guys found this informative and helpful to some degree. Uh, this is, of course, only specifically this red two cent Washington stamp. Uh, so just kind of a dive into what it's like figuring these things out. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed. Really appreciate you watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. I hope this helped out somebody in some way. Take care guys. Bye-bye.